Alright, hello everybody, welcome back to another video. So for today's video, I kind of want to start getting into lining web, um, sorry, lining web components. Uh, and before we do that, we actually need to set up the lining development uh, environment for that. So for today, I'll just be kind of following along this project that's in the trailhead. If you guys don't feel like following along, uh, I've left a link down in the description box below. So feel free to... Uh, grab that if you kind of want to walk through it yourself, but if you don't um, Feel free to just kind of watch along and we'll get it set up together Okay, so the first thing that needs to happen is We need to install the Java JDK um, I believe at as of the moment of this recording you're able to use either J Java JDK 8 or 11 uh, I think in my system has 11 installed already so that's what I'll be using. Um, and I'll leave links down for, for all this stuff here. So you, know, you can quickly reference it if you need it. Uh, me, myself, I've opted to use the Adopt Open JDK because as it states here, um, I guess it's more like more free open source, meaning that you don't need to go to the Oracle website and set up an account to get the, the Java JDK. You can kind of just use this alternative right here. So um, since I already have this installed, I'll kind of just show you what I did, right? Um, you go to this website, you just select either 8 or 11. Um, I wouldn't do the latest because it probably won't work with the Salesforce tools that are currently available. And then just click download. Uh, an executable will download if you're on Windows. And I think similarly for PC, it's probably like a zip file. Go ahead and install it. Leave everything as default. Uh, don't uncheck any boxes. Uh, I believe there are a few options to automatically add the path for you if you're on PC. Go ahead and leave that checked so that it does do it for you because if you don't, you'll need to manually set up those environment variables yourself, which is a bit more of a hassle. So yes, leave everything as the default setup, install that. Once you're done with that, we actually want to install the Salesforce command line interface tool that you can get uh, by just Googling Salesforce CLI. Uh, it should be the first link. Here you'll see that you're able to download it for Mac OS, uh, Windows, or Linux. Go ahead and download this. Same thing, leave everything as default. Uh, once that's installed, um, you can verify that it, it went through just fine by either opening up a terminal or a command prompt and typing in the command sfdx. Uh, click enter and after a few seconds, if installed correctly, you should see uh, some output, meaning that it says Salesforce CLI and then whatever version you have, uh, which tells you that it was correctly installed. So once that's done, the next thing you want to grab is a Visual Studio Code, which is a pretty awesome text editor. It is open source. It has a lot of support, a lot of extensions, plugins, whatever you want to call it. It is available for Mac OS, Windows, or Linux as well. Uh, just download the stable build. You don't need anything more than that. Go ahead and get that downloaded. Once you have that downloaded, um, you'll see something similar to this. Uh, next thing you want to do is go to File, Preferences, Settings. And then here, or actually before we do that, you want to click on this little thing called Extensions right here. And then you want to search for Salesforce extensions pack, I believe. Yes, this right here. This will go ahead and download a bunch of other extensions uh, for Visual Studio Code, which basically act as like a wrapper to the command line interface that you, st that you installed into your terminal. Um, and this is useful because instead of having to open up that command line terminal and typing in commands yourself, you can use the built-in Visual Studio Code um, command palette, which you can get to if you, if by clicking on, sh or rather on your keyboard, typing in shift control P, which brings up this little thing. And then you can type in SFDX. And then there's all these nice, you know, for nicely formatted, um, uh, options that you can click on instead of having to memorize the command itself. So kind of useful. It's not, you don't need to use it if you, if you're a bit more hardcore and want to type in the commands yourself, but it's there, uh, if you want to use that. Okay, so once you install the Salesforce extension pack, now let's go ahead and go into File, Preferences, Settings, and then we have to type in Apex. And we do that, 
uh, we're going to have a couple options show up. The one we care about is uh, this one right here, Salesforce DX dash VS Code dash Apex Java Home. So basically, we just need to tell it, you know, where our Java JDK exists. Um, this could be a little different for everyone. Um, for Mac, um, I will leave a, um, a document guide uh, in the description box below. Um, the one I'm referring to is, I believe, uh, give me a second. Yes, this one, this one right here. So if, uh, if you're on Mac, you, you, you might use this. It really depends on where your, where your JDK is. So, you know, um, I believe, you know, it, it could be here or if you're on Windows, it could be there. But if you're on Windows, I can help you find it very quickly. You just go to your PC, click into your hard drive, go to program files, and then whether you install the Oracle Java or the Adopt Open JDK, click into that, and then click into the actual JDK itself. And then you can cl click here and just kind of copy that path. This is the path that you will paste into here to basically tell Visual Studio Code that that's where your Java JDK exists. So once you have that, um, I believe it auto saves, but just to be safe, you can, you can um, type in Control S to save it yourself. And then to kind of wrap things up to test if it actually worked or not, you can do Control Shift P and then type in SFDX. And the simplest one to do would probably be create a project. So just kind of creates a, 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 a project. And if, and if it works, that means that, you know, all the extensions and the CLI tools working together to give you um, basically a scaffold of a project. So I'm going to go ahead and just select standard and then we'll give it a name. I'll just do hello world. I'm going to do two because I think I already have, I already have one in the system. So it's going to ask me where to save it. I'm just going to throw that on the desktop. And then once it's done running, you'll see that basically Visual Studio Code kind of opened up a new, a new window of itself. And let's go ahead and close the get starting. And then on the left hand side, you'll see in the Explorer that inside of the Hello World one directory, we have all these different folders and files. Um, very quickly. Uh, and I'll make additional videos in the future, you know, going more in depth and um, and actually utilizing Lightning Web Components and, you know, deploying them into our development environment. But what I'm most interested is in clicking in this Force app uh, folder here and clicking into this LWC folder here. And you'll see there's pretty much just some JSON files. I want to create an actual Lightning Web Component and I can do that by, again, on my keyboard, uh, hitting shift control P, which opens up the command palette, typing SFDX, see all the available uh, commands for us. So you can see here, there's a, there should be a lot that are kind of familiar to you, like create Apex class, create Apex trigger, uh, Aura apps, that's more lightning stuff. But I want to create a lightning web component. When I do that, it's going to ask me for a name, and then I'll just give it the same name as my project. So I'll call it Hello World. It's going to ask me where I wanted to dump that into. And as you see here, it's basically going to put it right here where that's pretty much where all Lightning Web Components for a specific project should go. So I'll just click enter. And then uh, this thing's going to pop up because it just barely set up Visual Studio Code. I'll go ahead and make it to where it's only in private networks. So uh, let me go ahead and close all this information. But uh, you'll see on the right hand side on the bottom that it, the command was able to successfully run. So that's, that's kind of good news. But let me go ahead and close that. And as you can see now, inside of the LWC folder directory, uh, we have a hello world folder and there's an HTML file, a JavaScript file and an XML file. The HTML, that's kind of, you know, the, the skeleton of, of how our lightning web components is going to look like. So, you know, think any traditional website, mm, it most likely has an HTML file to it, probably a JavaScript file as well. This is where all your logic will exist. And then the XML file, this is used to kind of um, uh, describe information about this Lightning Web Component. And in here, you can actually specify if, you know, if, if, if it's available to your org. And if it is available, you know, what is it available as? Is it, you know, 
a specific type of app or there's some other options as well that we can get into um, later. So um, that's very basic. Uh, I decided not to do an actual example in this video just to keep things short. The next video I do probably will probably will be an example of a lightning web component and just so we can just so that we can start getting into it. So let me know what you guys think of this video. So that's pretty much it. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comment section down below. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you found this information useful. Uh, also feel free to leave a comment below if you want to see other other types of videos in Salesforce as well. Um, I'm just starting to get back into creating a lot more videos. So I'm taking suggestions right now. All right. Thanks for watching. See you later.